If you've ever taken some introductory physics or astronomy, you probably know that planets and moons orbit in ellipses. Now, this can seem counterintuitive because almost everything we encounter in everyday life goes around in rough circles, not perfect ellipses. It can seem like an odd shape for nature to pick. Well, firstly, circular orbits are not impossible. Circles are just special cases of ellipses when their eccentricity, or how squished sideways they are, equals zero. It's just that it's extremely unlikely that you'll ever find a circular orbit, because the initial conditions need to be just right to make it happen. Today, we're going to prove that ellipses actually do make the most sense for orbital shapes. Normally, we'd write out Newton's laws of motion, plug in the gravitational force, and solve for some new orbital equation, but we can avoid a lot of that math through a simple graph. Firstly, instead of using regular xy Cartesian coordinates from algebra, we're going to set up our system in polar coordinates. Thus, rather than representing the orbiting planet's position in terms of x and y, it'll be represented by its distance or radius from the center star, r, and its angle from the x-axis, theta. The entire orbit can be shown in terms of r and theta. Okay, now we can start the proof. If we begin using Newton's equations, we end up with this mess. You'll notice that the equation has both theta and r in it, which makes it a pain to solve. However, there's a simple trick we can use to make it much simpler. The laws of physics tell us that angular momentum is conserved, so this quantity will never change throughout the entire orbit of the planet. The angular momentum is directly related to the rate of change of the planet's angle, or its angular speed. Because of this, we can replace our nasty theta term in the original equation with an angular momentum term instead, and the equation becomes much easier to solve. But what does this new equation mean? Well, the fact that theta no longer appears in the equation means that it's as if we set theta constant, as if it isn't a variable anymore. This is what it would look like if you were standing on the sun and turning at the same rate as the planet. It would look like theta was never changing, only the radius. So this shift in variables gives us a whole new way of looking at the problem. Our new equation is the form of total force equals something minus something else, so there must be two competing properties at play here. The first is gravity. It's always attracting the planet and the sun and wants r to decrease. The other is inertia. It always wants the planet to continue in a straight line at constant speed, so it is constantly resisting gravity and trying to increase r by falling out of orbit into a straight line. The shape of our orbit in the end depends on these two properties. Okay, back to the proof. Newton's laws also tell us that forces can be represented visually through a potential field, which you can think of as a sort of topographic map. The force will always pull an object down the hill of a potential field to the lowest point, just like gravity pulls objects down a hill to the lowest point possible. Now, if we turn our force equation into a potential field, this is what it looks like. The graph shows the potential energy as a function of r, the radius. When the planet is close to the sun, the potential is very steep and pushes it away, since the inertia term outweighs the inward pulling gravity term. When the planet is far away, however, gravity wins out and pulls the planet closer, so the whole graph just represents the back and forth of gravity and inertia. We can show different kinds of orbits pretty easily by placing a ball in this field to represent the planet. If the ball just sits in the valley of the field, it has a circular orbit. Throughout the entire orbit, the radius never changes. However, if we start the ball a little higher up on the hill, it will roll down, roll back, and so on forever. In this case, the radius oscillates over time, growing and shrinking throughout the orbit. If we show this orbit in space, it becomes a perfect ellipse, with the radius going back and forth over time. So in the end, you can thank the eternal battle of inertia and gravity for those perfect elliptical orbits. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing, liking, and checking out my other videos. See ya!